السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى علیہ و اصحاب اجمعین I have a very interesting uh, verse to share with you uh, this evening, my brothers and sisters. And uh, I want you to ponder on this verse. I want you to contemplate on, over this verse and uh, try to process this verse, try to digest this verse and try to, you know, take some lessons, some reminders uh, from this beautiful verse of the Holy Quran. It is from chapter 42, verse 30, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's a very powerful, very amazing, very interesting verse, where Allah says that, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ بِمُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَسِيرٌ Translation of this verse that, and whatever the misfortune befalls you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whatever the calamities whatever the difficulties that you face in your life or whatever the afflictions that you have in your life, whatever the trials that you have in your life, it is because of your hands have earned. It is because of your own earning. It is because of your own kasab. It is because of your own actions. So in other words, don't blame this and that. It is because of your deeds. It is because of your attitude. It is because of your behavior that you are in this situation of calamity. You know, sometimes we face the calamities in our life. Sometimes we face certain difficulties and we wonder that why it is happening with me. I did everything best. I did my best in my business, in my family, in my relationship with my spouse, with my children. But I'm still struggling. I'm still not getting the way I'm supposed to get. I'm not, I'm not receiving things which I'm expecting in my, in my life. So at that very moment, you should just pause for a while and you should look at back. Look at back of your actions, look at back of your life, look back at your life. That is there was something that you did in your previous life, in your past life, which caused the displeasure of Allah? which caused the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not saying that every time that we face the difficulties, it is because of our sins. No, because sometimes it is because Allah just want to test us and to see our patience and to see the level of our iman. Because sometimes Allah tests us because he wants to give us the highest station in the paradise although you never committed the sin you never did something because Allah but Allah want to give you the higher station best place in the paradise so the more you are tested the more you are being purified and the more you are being elevated and in Allah ida ahab abdan iftalahu when Allah loves somebody he afflicts them with the calamities and and the prophets they were the tested most so it doesn't mean that they committed the sins they never committed the sins prophets they are innocent they did some, some things that sometimes is a little bit mistakes, but never a sin. They never committed a sin in their entire life. They are sinless, they are spotless, they are innocent. Prophets, the Anbiya, all the Rasul. This is our belief. But they were still being tested. And the Nabi Karim Wasallam says that the higher your Iman is, the greater the difficulty will be. The more you, you know, ascend in the Iman, in the faith, the more difficulties you will face in your life. So Allah knows that how much you can handle. Allah knows the level of your iman. Allah knows the level of your faith. That, okay, if I will give him this thing, he, he will not return from me. He will not turn back from me. So Allah knows. La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wasaha. Whatever we faced in our life, whatever the calamities, it, it is in our, how they say, capacity. It is in our capability. Uh, you know, uh, Allah never overburdens the soul. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. So, sometimes Allah tests us it, because just want to give us the higher station, higher place in this dunya and as well as in the life of the hereafter. And sometimes Allah tests us so that those tests be the reason of the purification of our souls and those tests can be the reason of our, once again, 
you know, uh, building our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To reconnect ourselves with Allah because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget Allah. Sometimes when we are in the prosperity, when we are in the goodness, when we are in the joys and happiness and success. So most of the time, mankind or the human being, they tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they face the happiness. But the minute the difficulties strike us, the minute the calamities uh, or we are struck with the calamities, we once again remember Allah. We once again rebuild our relationship, you know, with our creator, with our cherisher. And sometime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us as it is mentioned in this verse because of our sins. Because what we have earned with our own body, with our own soul, with our own nafs. Because... My brothers and sisters, what goes around comes around. Remember that. It is makafati amal. If you did something wrong, so don't expect all the time things going to be right in your way. No, that's impossible. If you did something which was not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so don't expect that everything will be smooth in the way you have planned, the way you have expected in your life. No. How they say, what you sow, so shall you reap? You know, if you have sow or if you have bore the, the corn, so... You will expect the corn. You will not expect the pine to to give you uh, to return. So, so if you have fed to your soul the sin, so what the in in return will be the same kind of effects, the same kind of the consequence, my brothers and sisters. And this is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is trying to tell us in this beautiful verse of the Holy Quran, chapter forty-two, verse thirty. That wa ma asaba kum in musibatin, fa bi ma kasabat aydikum. That whatever the misfortune befalls you, O my servants, O my slaves, remember, it is because of your hands that have earned. It is because of your own amal. It is because of the sins, some sins that you have committed in your previous life. And that is why you are facing those sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, an kasir." But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He pardons much as well. He is the forgiving one as well. He is the oft forgiving and the most merciful. If you will ask Allah's forgiveness, Allah will purify you from those sins and Allah will save you from the calamities. And it's so true, there is a beautiful hadith of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Ahmad transmitted this hadith, Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated this hadith. It's a very interesting hadith, very amazing and very powerful hadith as well. Most of you are not aware of this hadith but this is a very authentic hadith. Where Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that إِذَا كَسُرَتْ زَنُوبُ الْعَبْدِ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ مَا يُكَفِّرُهَا Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if a person commits many sins, minor or the major sins, and he or she has nothing that will expiate for them, means that a person commits the sins, but then he or she does not do to expiate those sins, means that no repentance, no istighfar. For example, when we do good actions, what happens? Those good actions removes or purifies the, the, the wrong actions from our life. It, it purifies ourselves. In the hasanata use hibn as sayyat. That indeed, you know, the good actions, the good deeds, they, they remove actually, they, they remove all the, all the bad actions and all the bad deeds. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if a person commits many sins, minor or the major sins, and he has nothing that will expiate for them. He is not doing any istighfar, not repentance, not begging Allah is azkar and reciting the Quran and following the bad, bad, bad action with the good action. So, so if those things are not provided by the slave of Allah, by the servant of Allah, so what Allah does at that time, then Allah will test him with some grief. Allah will test her with some grief that will expiate for him. Because end of the day, Allah is our well-wisher. Allah, Allah don't want you to leave this dunya without being purified. So in one way or another, Allah has to purify you. So you, now you have to choose which option you want. You want the hard option or you want the easy option. So you just want, the, okay, let me ask the forgiveness and make the tawbah and make the sincere repentance and I will never commit this sin again. Or you just want to leave it as it is and... Allah will decide for you then. Allah decides in both ways, in both, in, both, both, in both options. But the next option is difficulties, calamities, 
this problem in the business, that problem in the health, this problem in the, in the family life and so, so on and so forth. So sometime, my brothers and sisters, the point is that we face difficulties. It is not because of this and that. It is because of our sins, our own sins that we have committed 10 years ago or 20 years ago and we have forgotten and we didn't even ask the forgiveness of the sin that we committed 10 years ago. Yes, and because of that, the sins, the forgiveness of those sins are still pending and sometimes we still suffer. Sometimes we still have, we, we pay for those sins that we have committed 20 years. Although you're living now a good life, a righteous life, but repentance is important. Istighfar is something which, which removes all the difficulties, which take away all the difficulties from your life, my brother. So inshallah, from here I will continue tomorrow. And we will continue this very interesting topic. I hope that you have understood. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and every one of you. So we have a sister. She is going to share a beautiful story with you, a beautiful presentation. May Allah bless her. MashaAllah. May Allah bless both of them. Sister Sumaya and Sister Safiya. MashaAllah. So inshallah, over to, over to my sister. So until next program, uh, take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sophia Khan and today I will be reading for you part two of the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Did you enjoy the last part? Let me begin now. The cunning brothers met with their father, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam. They said, O oh, our father, why do you not trust us with our brother Yusuf when we are indeed his well wishes? Send him with us tomorrow to enjoy himself and play. And verily, we will take care of him. Prophet Yaqub said, Truly, it saddens me that you should take him away. I, I fear lest a wolf should devour him while you are careless of him. They said, If a wolf devours him, while we are a strong group to guard him, then surely we are the losers. Quran chapter 12, verses 11 to 14. Prophet Yaqub suggested a point which had not occurred to them in their discussion feared that desert wolves would eat him. No one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if he meant the wild wolves or the wolves within them. They coaxed their father to send Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam with them and Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam agreed under their pressure. The brothers were excited that they could now get rid of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam for after this they could stand a better chance of receiving their father's affection. On leaving home, they went directly to the well as they had planned, on the pretext of drinking water. One of them put their arms around Prophet Yusuf Islam and held him tightly. Startled by this unusual behavior, Prophet Yusuf Islam struggled to free himself. More brothers rushed to hold him. One of them removed his shirt. Some more joined in to lift Prophet Yusuf Islam up and cast him deep into the well. His piteous pleas made no difference to their cruel hearts. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam that he was safe and should not fear, for he would meet them again someday to remind them of what they had done. There was water in the well which buoyed Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam's body, so he was not harmed. He sat lonely in the water and then clung to a rock ledge overhead and climbed on top of it. His brothers just left him in that desolate place. Then they killed a sheep and soaked Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam shirt in its blood. One brother suggested that they should swear to keep their deed a close secret. Then all of them took the oath. Quranic chapter 12 verse 16 says, And they came to their father in the early part of the night weeping. Picture the scene being dark and broken by the crying of ten men. Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam was in his house when his sons entered the darkness of the night covering the darkness of their hearts and the darkness of their lives struggling to come out. Prophet Yaqub wondered aloud, why this weeping? Has anything happened to our flock? Our, oh, our father, they answered crying. We went racing with one another and left Yusuf by our belongings and a wolf devoured him. But you will never believe us even when we speak the truth. Quran chapter 12 verse 17. We were surprised after returning from the race that Yusuf was in the belly of a wolf. We did not see him. You will not believe us even though we are truthful. We are telling you what happened. 
The wolf has eaten Yusuf. This is Yusuf's shirt. We found it soiled with blood and did not find Yusuf. They brought his shirt stained with false blood. Quran chapter 12 verse 18. Deep down in his heart, Prophet Yaqub knew that his beloved son was still alive and that his other sons were lying. He held the blood-stained shirt in his hand, spread it out and remarked, What a merciful wolf! He ate up my beloved son without tearing his shirt. Their faces turned red when he demanded more information, but each swore by Allah that he was telling the truth. The broken-hearted father burst into tears. Nay, but your own selves have made up a tale, so for me patience is more fitting. It is Allah alone whose help can be sought against that which you assert. Quran chapter 12 verse 18. The father acted wisely by praying for mighty patience, which is free of doubt, and by trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help against what they had plotted against him and his son. This story emphasizes reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as shown by Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, even when faced with those who deceive us openly and without fear. Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam shows us immense patience and complete tawakkul or trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew he would be reunited with his beloved son someday and bore his trials with patience. This concludes part two of the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. I hope you enjoyed it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mm -hmm.